I'm John Donaldson from Austin, Texas. My health was, uh, I guess you could say extremely poor. When I found out <laughs> April 2005 that uh, I had Hodgkin's lymphoma, I was given 90 days. You could say I was, I was sent home to die. I was calling friends and family and saying my goodbyes. Uh, what I saw was uh, my rib cage, of course, and um, two big white lobes with dark spots at the bottom. You know, approximately on my right lung, there was about two inches of dark, right? And approximately on my left lung, there was about four inches of dark lung. And so, you know, I'm telling the x-ray technician standing there, you know, I'm like, oh, well, that's not so bad, right? I just got a little bit of unhealthy lung in the bottoms there, you know, maybe a little bit of fluid or something. And 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 he looked at me and he said, well, you know, I, I'm not an MD. I, I can't tell you what this means. You know, it's not my job. So I go back to my room and, and the ER doctor comes in. And she said that, uh, she thought I had some, some type of lymphoma. I was like, oh, no way. Not, uh, 27. You know, no way. Well, she says, yes way, and I'm going to refer you to an oncologist. I said, well, an oncologist is a cancer doctor. I need to see a pulmonologist. I need to see somebody about my lungs, you know. And she, she promptly puts the uh, x-ray up on the thing. She says, you see this? And I'm like, yeah, that's the healthy part. She's like, no, that's the tumor. Every set of healthy lungs in an x-ray is black. That's what lungs look like in an x-ray. They're black. Mine were white. Looked like a, the most extravagant spider web you've ever seen. I go in. They give me uh, two milligrams of liquid Ativan. They give me a shot of uh, steroids, you know, so I can handle the medicine, and then they start to drip. The drip takes approximately six hours. You know, I sat there for six hours and, and I got my drugs. And you know, by the time you're done, you don't know what's up, you don't know what's down. Uh, my state of mind at the time was uh, my wife, I was bedridden at the time. You know, uh, my hair was falling out, my fingernails were thinning, and I didn't have any energy. I'd get up to use the bathroom and and be gasping for air before I could get back to the bed. Um, my wife is a wonderful cook. She kept me fed. But I was so irrational on the drugs that and the only way I can describe chemotherapy is that, you know, if you've ever been poisoned, you probably know what it's like. Well, I was so irrational in that state of mind that my wife would bring me a plate of food and I wouldn't make her taste it first because I thought she was poisoning me. <laughs> I didn't understand the impact the drugs and the chemotherapy was having on my on my logic, you know. I, I couldn't decipher. I was literally crazy. I go in for my second treatment and my my red blood cell level is so low they can't treat me because it would kill me. And then I see the the radiation doctor. She told me that uh, she was real sorry I had to be there. And she told me that uh, I would be back. And not only would I be back, but I would be back with different cancers. And Hodgkin's patients always come back. And she didn't want me to have any false hope. Two months, I get a CT scan. We have a bubble on the left side that's growing three times more rapid than my original tumor. Go back in two months and sure enough, it's growing. It's growing rapidly and it's, and it's, uh, and it's getting the best of me. And my doctor says, okay, well, I gave you the most aggressive chemotherapy treatment on the market today. So, I can't send you back to chemotherapy. My next option is a stem cell transplant. Once he explained to me what a stem cell transplant was, I said no thanks. I wasn't willing on doing that. I had been through enough suffering. 
my wife had seen enough. Everybody had seen enough. So, you know, my mom calls me up and, and she's excited and she says, well, I don't know what's going to happen, but I want you to try this juice. Can, can you promise me you're going to try this juice? So it's my mom, you know, and I'm sick. And of course, of course, I say, yes, mom, of course, give it to me. So she gives it to me. Neither one of us know what it is. Neither one of us know what we have our hands on. And I stay on the juice steady for two months. Uh, in the meantime, I guess I drank, uh, you know, six to maybe six bottles a month, you know, I maybe went to 10 to 12 bottles, okay. I go in to see my oncologist. Um, you know, you go to a doctor's office, this is how it goes. You go to a doctor's office, you check in, you wait 20 minutes and the nurse calls you back, she checks your blood pressure and you wait and then you go to your exam room and you wait for another 15, 20 minutes on your doctor. And that's what I experienced anyway, Nine. 100% of the time. Uh, this time, you know, I go in, I sign in, wait 20 minutes, nurse comes against me, she checks my blood pressure, checks my weight. I've gained eight pounds. Phenomenal. <laughs> that, that in itself is phenomenal. Uh, I go to my exam room. My doctor's in there, sitting in his chair, directly looks up at me and says, what? have you been doing? Your red blood cells are textbook perfect. Your proteins are absolutely perfect. Your sodium to potassium, potassium ratio is absolutely perfect. Healthy people don't have these numbers. Your CT scan came in. We can't find your tumor. The pathologist can't find it. They search and search after slide after slide after slide. It's not there. What have you been doing? I'm like, well, you know, my mom gave me this juice to try, and I, I've been drinking it like crazy, and, you know, I don't know what I've been doing. You tell me what I've been doing. You're the doctor. And he's like, well, I don't know. I can't explain this. The only thing I can say is it's residual from uh, chemo and radiation. He hadn't treated me in six months. My tumor was growing faster than anything he had seen before, two months before that day. Two months later, I go in, nothing. Not one cancer cell. Not any low red blood cell count. Not any low proteins. He scheduled for me to have my port removed, which means that I'm cancer free. Hodgkin's patients don't get their ports removed. Hodgkin's patients only get their ports replaced. <laughs> I don't have a port catheter, and I'm cancer free today. Uh, now he's he's pushed back my appointments to every three months, you know, and uh, it's only better, you know. How can you go from perfect to more perfect, you know? There's no evidence of anything ever ever coming back, you know. I, I've, I'm more healthy than than any other chemotherapy patient he's dealt with. His words. At first, I wasn't sure, you know, the juice, miracle, what was it? But you know, when I run out, I know it. Within 48 hours, I know it. It's harder for me to wake up. My digestive system, my digestive tract from mouth to colon is uh, not at the same as it was 48 hours ago. Uh, chest pains, night sweats. Uh, literally, within 48 hours of running out of the juice, I will never be without juice. Yes, my uh, my father is on the juice, and he's an absolute health nut, nutritionist, uh, bodybuilder, and he has gone from taking a thousand dollars worth of supplements to a hundred dollars worth of supplements a month. And my mother, my mother's on the juice. Uh, she suffered from. Uh, breast cancer before I found out I had cancer and and uh, she had a lot of residual effects from her chemotherapy washed it out of her system uh, gave her complete health as well well of course uh, 
it's uh, like I said, I thought God was blessing me with my last two weeks of comfort. And that's what it's all about. I can offer a little taste of comfort to somebody. You better believe I'm going to do that. <laughs>